180 years ago, Afrikaner farmers, the Boers, crossed the Vaal River with their ox wagons and flocks. They bought off or fought off the scattered tribes that lived across the river. Keep those weapons on the target. Keep your triangles, gentlemen. Now it's the Boers who are feeling under siege. Keep your barrel on the target. I want as many barrels pointing at windows as possible. When a farm attack's reported, armed civilians often arrive long before police. Clear. Windows left. I haven't heard anybody shot if there's somebody in that house. Have we got a victim there? The guns aren't loaded, but this training exercise is deadly serious. Move, move, yeah. There might be survivors in the house in desperate need of help, but the criminals might still be in there too. Ready? Ready? Breach! OK, gents, what, uh, what you did here was better than when you were coming through that door. Trevor Roberts' uh, security company, Conserve, used to specialise in guarding wildlife against poachers. You guys are coming around and you're tending to turn the weapon. Now, deterring and responding to violent robberies on isolated farms is his company's core business. As little of your body being shown as possible. A gun battle, he says, is the last thing he wants his volunteers to face. So it's there, and then move, move, move. The ideal situation is to rather get the perpetrators out of the house and into the fields. So you'd rather scare them away? We'd rather scare them away and run, and our objective is to save a life, and that would be the victim. An hour's drive southwest of Mulder's Drift, on the maize fields around Fockville, on May the 13th this year, nobody was scared away and nobody's life was saved. Seventy-eight-year-old Fanny Engelbrecht didn't have time to call for help. When Fanny and his wife Colleen didn't show up for Mother's Day lunch, his son Johan strolled 300 meters up the track to his parents' house to investigate. Uh, when I came here, my dad's vehicle was standing here, uh, like he was already back from church, nothing unusual. Um, and uh, I went into the house. As I entered into the wall here, there was a lot of blood uh, lying on the floor here. And uh, I immediately realized that something is wrong. This is the door that actually broke down to get to a study. And uh, I found them lying there, tied together. Uh, next to each other. Right here, tied together? Yeah, they, they were tied. My, my dad was lying on his back. My mother was lying face down, hands tied behind, behind a, a, a back. My dad had a big gaping hole like the size of a golf ball in his, in his throat. There was a pool of blood here all over. Um, when I when I touched him, he was cold already. And my mother was lying face down, but she was still hot. But I couldn't feel a, a pulse. Um, they, they, their throats were slit. Um, they were tortured here. I found a, a iron cord around my mother's neck. Um, she was obviously, they, they, they tortured her. And uh, yeah. Why do you think they would have done that? Uh, I think they wanted the keys for the safes, they wanted the keys for the vehicles, you know, and, and they tortured them to get that information out of them. Um, and then they killed them anyway? And then they killed them, yeah, when they're done. My dad always said, it's not if, it's when. Did he? Yeah. Uh, he knew it's, it's coming. We, we all know it's coming. Uh, it's just a question of when. When Johan called his wife, Sua, to tell her the grim news, she could barely speak to their daughter, Tessa. My mom had not heard the word, because I had asked her, Mama, what's going on? Tell me what's going on, because she was so angry when my pa heard her, that she didn't speak. 
en al wat zij kon uitkry is opa, oma vermoer. En ek het in mekaar in gesak, ek het geheil en ek het nie geweet wat om te doen nie. Ek was baie naal by en hulle en hulle was al twee wonderlijke, zachte mense, kinders van hier. Aren't you frightened to live here? Ek is, ek het nogal, ek weet nie, as ek kamer toe gaan, gaan het my laaste dag wees nie. Ek weet nie of ek ook weer gaan opstaan nie. En uh, die draden gaan nou seker hier inkom. Belatedly, with the help of his neighbor, Johan Engelbrecht is installing electrified security fences around his farmhouse, mainly to assuage the fears of his wife and daughter. I'm doing it because it might make them feel safer, but I know for sure that if they want you, they will get you outside. You can build a prison around your house, but at some point you have to leave that prison and go out and farm, and that's where they get you. In Australia, a double murder on a farm would be headline news for days. Not in South Africa. It's just too common an event. My one uh, neighbor, Honest Kitchen, and his wife, they were murdered about six months ago. Um, then there's uh, Miss uh, Simpson, just Nikki Simpson. Nikki Simpson. Uh, she was tortured, drilled through her knees and feet. Uh, then there's Piet Hichu, uh, also a neighbor not far from here. He was shot, Carl Hall was shot. Uh, so in the last 10, 20 years in this area, I can name 20, 30 uh, attacks, murders uh, on farmers. Commercial Farmers Union claims there were only 47 farm murders last year, the lowest number in nearly 20 years. Afri Forum, an outspoken Afrikaner out. lobby group, says that figure is absurd. It's certainly wrong. Uh, during the, the calendar year of 2017, uh, there's been 84 farm murders that we could verify. And when we say we could verify, we mean we have a list and we have the names of the people actually who've been murdered. So to say that there's only been 47 is, I don't know if it's malicious or if it's negligence uh, or if there's a problem with the process in collecting the data, there could be a variety of reasons why the number is wrong. This place, perhaps deliberately, reminds a visitor of a war cemetery. And like all such places, it's moving. Each one of these crosses represents somebody's father or mother, somebody's son or daughter whose life was brutally cut short. And yet these 2,000 crosses represent white farmers and their families murdered since 1994. If you planted a cross for every South African, black or white, who's been murdered just last year, the crosses would stretch beyond the horizon, nearly 20,000 of them, and most of them have no memorial. Not far from the Engelbrecht farm near Fochville is the so-called informal settlement of Deep Sloot. It's a place of dire poverty and soaring unemployment. Uh, this settlement has, gro has grown up so much because... It wouldn't be wise to venture in here without a guide. Local journalist Golden Ntika is mine. He introduces me to Sabasu, 
whose family of eight lives in a one-room shack. She's been waiting for a government house for 11 years. Most of that time, she's been unemployed. I've done nursing, two-year courses, but I still can find even uh, just any other job, even without the one that I have qualifications for. Where would you like to live if you could choose? I would like to choose to live somewhere else because this place, I have small kids and I don't think it's a good environment for my kids to grow in. We don't even have water and more especially about sanitation, it's something that... Hard to keep the kids clean and healthy. Yes, huh? yes, even to play on a clean environment. Lack of sanitation is the least of Deep Sloot's problems, Golden tells me. It's plagued by crime, violence and mob justice. The brutality that's a feature of many farm attacks is commonplace here. Yeah, last year in November here, there was about four uh, suspects who were apprehended by the community. They accused them of, of rape and they brought them here at this a pile of rubbish you see here. It was a multitude of people that were here. All of them, they were murdered here. They were killed by the residents, stoned, beaten by sharp objects. They put tires around their neck, they poured petrol, then they set them a light on. So they, they died here. They, they were, were killed alive here. Yeah. they did that? Yeah, when they brought them here, they were alive. Yeah, they killed them here. It's not just in the settlements and the countryside that crime is rising. In South Africa's great cities, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban and Pretoria, there's a crime wave too. Armed robberies of security vans, home invasions, street muggings. According to the internationally respected Institute for Security Studies in Pretoria, armed attacks have increased 40% since 2012. have a real problem with violence and expressed in various different ways um, and so for us uh, sitting in South Africa um, looking at these 19,000 murders looking at trying to get a sense of where it's taking place the various complex factors that result into it this growth in armed attacks the gangs involved in cashing transit heists and then suddenly there's this international tension on the murders of white farmers it just sort of seems completely disproportionate it's not that it isn't a problem and of course for the victims it's terribly traumatic um, but it's not the biggest challenge facing South Africa. Is there any evidence for the claim that's often made that the farm attacks in particular are politically driven, that they're part of some organised campaign to drive the whites from the land? There's no credible evidence that the attacks against white farmers is organised or politically driven. There is evidence that the attacks on white farmers in South Africa are largely driven by criminal intent, greed. But Afri Forum's Ernst Roots says it's too simplistic to claim that the farm attackers have only one motive. Certainly robbery plays a role and the intention to steal plays a role, but certainly there's, there's enough evidence that racism plays a big role and there's enough evidence that political influences play a big role. There are reported cases where the murderers themselves have said that they were influenced by politics in the committing of these crimes. Um, and secondly, even more concerning than that, is the political climate in South Africa. That climate is heating up, the white farmers say. And one cause is the rise of a new political party, the Economic Freedom Fighters, or EFF. I've come to one of their rallies in northwest province where the mood, to me, seems far from hostile. Job, opportunities for varsity and for everything. I love EFF with my whole life. The red berets and t-shirts are a clear enough statement. This is an old-fashioned communist party. Its policy is to nationalize all land in South Africa 
and redistribute it to the poor and needy. The EFF's self-styled commander-in-chief is Julius Malema, a former leader of the ruling African National Congress's Youth League. We are not going to accept that the poor of the poor must be excluded from education because they do not have money. Expelled from the ANC in 2012, he started his own rival party and promises the world to his followers. Education is a right. All of us must have access to education. But there's a dark side to Julius Malema's populism. He sets race against race with a recklessness that shocks the political establishment. At this rally, he takes aim at the Indian middle class. Majority of Indians hate Africans. Majority of Indians are racist. And but his favorite target scared. is the white landowner. He urges his followers to take back what was stolen from them. The white minority which took our land by force. You must say enough is enough. We are taking the future into our own hands. At the end of almost every speech, he sings an old ANC war song, Kill the Boer, although that particular phrase has been banned as hate speech. For all his blatant racial dog whistling, Malema has proved to be a shrewd political operator. There's nothing you can do, there's nothing this parliament can do, with or without you. People are going to occupy land. It was the EFF in Parliament who proposed a motion in favour of expropriating land without compensation, a move that the ANC, led by new state president Cyril Ramaphosa, had little choice but to support. Honourable Ntlangwin, Honourable Gadi, Honourable Mflongo. So far, the ANC has not seized any farmland without paying market price. But when I caught up with the ANC spokesman on land reform, Ronald Lamola, at a fancy conference centre outside Pretoria, he made it clear that it soon will. There will be expropriation of some of the white-owned farmlands. There will be expropriation of uh, land that government needs to for roads or for, for residential purposes. So there will be expropriation. We've talked to white farmers who say we are being attacked and not sufficiently protected by the government, and now our land is under threat as well. What they want to do is get rid of us. What's your response to that? It's not true. There's no such a thing. There's no crime targeted to white people in South Africa. It's a crime that is happening in the farms, it's happening everywhere, and government is doing its best to resolve the crime problem. With regard to the land question, there is no way we can avoid it. The, the, we have to address the land question. Farmers like Johan Engelbrecht say the mere threat of expropriation has dramatically affected the market for private land. I mean, if you wanted to sell this farm now, would you get a good price for Nothing. it? Nothing. It's zero. It's worth zero. Already? We had, we had several uh, auctions in the last two, three weeks cancelled because there was no people interested in buying land. Why will you buy a farm and tomorrow the, gov the government's going to take it. And who is going to buy a farm if living there endangers their lives? 
what has happened, I've just spoken to a tenant here of uh, plot 174. He thinks he disturbed some people that were in his house busy breaking in. A nighttime training exercise turns into a genuine manhunt. Trevor Roberts' convoy of volunteers, a dozen vehicles strong, begins to inspect the fence lines around the property, looking for signs that the robbers are making for a nearby township. What are you looking for? Uh, fence cuts, battle signs, which uh, anything they would have left behind while passing through a fence. Um, you know, they sometimes wrap toilet paper around the fences um, as a marker, so if they're trying to get away quickly in the dark, um, it's, a, it's an easy marker for them to know where they can escape to. Follow me. This time, it's not a serious attack, just a break-in while the residents were out. OK, they found the laptop oh, bag. Okay. Did you hear? Are you yeah. on radio? Yeah. OK, fine. The chances still remain they're going to run this way. So our action must carry on. Okay. We've got lots of people down there as well, so yeah. we, we covered. We'll carry on like this. OK, are you ready? Good. Good. Go. But the threat to farmers' lives is as great as ever. In the brief time we spent in South Africa, seven people were murdered in farm attacks. The argument about what motivates these crimes goes on. My personal opinion about this is that these farm attacks are partially uh, motivated by money, greed, and partially about uh, politics, and, you know, the, the situation in our country. And, not only do they kill, but the way they kill, uh, they torture you, they, they, they uh, hurt you, and, and, and uh, this, is, this is hate, this is political hate. Yeah, and there has been a lot of those tensions happening. It's a view that's echoed unexpectedly by my guide through the alleyways of Deep Sloot, Golden Ntika. He says he knows several gang members who've taken part in farm attacks. Most often those crimes, they don't just uh, end up being uh, clean crimes. They end up killing the person as well. Why? So, oh, sometimes through resistance that the farmer doesn't want to give them what they want, even if he has or he doesn't have, they would use force on him and they end up killing the person. You see, and some of them, they have that uh, past ideology of saying, no, the farmers took our land. Uh, for free, and when they go there, they take out the anger on them. So you think there is a yeah. racial... There is that racial element, racial, yeah, a racial element in, in it as well. It's a thing of the past that was there, and it's still continuing in a form of, 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 of robberies. Yeah, but it is there. It's there. An hour's drive away from Deep Sloot, the burghers of Fockville gather each Sunday to pray for forgiveness and survival. For more than a century, the Dutch Reformed Church of South Africa provided the theological bedrock upon which apartheid was built. God created separate races, it told its flock, and separate they should stay. Its ministers no longer preach that message, but there are no black faces here. These people know their Bible. Exodus 34, verse 7. The Lord God visits the sins of the fathers on their children and their children's children. Many younger Afrikaners have already left the church, and the country too. If she has her way, Tessa Engelbrecht, devout believer though she is, will follow soon, perhaps to Australia. Yes, I would like that. Thank you for my mom and my 
voorbereid as hulle dalk een dag sal besluit om oor te gaan na Australië toe, dan weet ek ook, daar is plek vir hulle. Maar ek sal, as ek die kans krij, so sonder om twee keer te denk, sal ek gaan. Like his father before him, Johan is a respected elder of the church. His roots here are generations deep. It's just a few weeks since his parents' murder. He'll get the harvest in, he says, and then decide what to do. It won't be easy. If you've been on the farm for 40 years, two generations, and uh, you've put a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, tears into the farm, you just don't uh, just pack up and leave. What would make you stay or what would make you move? What, how are you going to make that decision? Well, it all depends on the government. Uh, if, if President Ramaphosa is, is willing to step up and uh, address the situation in our country, the, the crime and the corruption, I will more than willing, be willing to stay. Yeah. But uh, at this point, everything is just going south. So if it goes on like that? Uh, what future are there for my children? There's no future here. Yeah. Oh, bring me terug naar jou Transvaal, daar waar mijn Sari woont. Daar onder een dimmel is bij die groen door een boom, daar woont mijn Sari Mare. Daar onder een dimmel is bij die groen door een boom, daar woont mijn Sari Mare.